Just as there's no distinction between the dream and the dreamer, it's only the dreaming, there's no distinction between the individual and the world in which the individual finds itself. We have this notion of a body and we have a notion of an external world. They're both only notions. And if we can appreciate that they aren't different from each other, then we can go beyond them and come back to the experiencing, just the experiencing. The identity of the body, of the individual and the world is described here as the cosmic person, the Virat. Since he himself is the cosmic mind, he has no mind. There is only what is going on. It's like saying that the dreamer has a dream, but the dreamer doesn't have a dream. There's only the dreaming. Since the infinite self alone apparently becomes the experience, which is but pure consciousness, there is no experiencer apart from it. In the same way, since he is the experiencer in all the senses, there are no indriyas or senses in him. Therefore, the distinctions among the senses are but notions. The concept that indriyas, senses, stand in relation to the mind as the limbs to the body is erroneous. There is no such distinction. Even the body and the limbs are but one unit. Notions of the senses are literally an afterthought. There is the experiencing going on. And then we start thinking about the experiencing, the different qualities of that experiencing, different aspects of it. And then we divide it into visual experiencing, sound experiencing, touch experiencing and so on. And then we come up with ideas of the senses. We relate visual experiencing to the eyes and, and so on. These are notions and the notions exist in consciousness and consciousness is what is happening right now. Whatever actions take place in this world originate in him. On account of him, the world is seen to be real. If he ceases to be, the world ceases to be. And this is why reality seems so solid. This is because of consciousness. Why do dreams seem so real? When you're in a dream, it's perhaps even more real than your normal waking state. But what's this quality of reality that we give to dreams and then we subsequently give to the waking state. It's only because of the reality of consciousness that this happens. The world, creation, Brahma the creator and Virat the cosmic person are figures of speech. They are but notions that arise in the pure infinite consciousness. There are ways of bringing us back to realization of our own nature. We have a lot of notions which detract from us realizing our true nature. One of these notions is the notion of having a body, which is in contrast to the notion of the physical world. The notion of the virat overrides this to some extent. And the Virat is the same as the creator Brahma. And then we get, we get over the notion of Brahma, of a creation and a creator. And then we come back to the source of these notions. Rama asked, when this cosmic person is a mere notion, how does he exist in that body? That body is the universe, but that universe is only notional as well. The sister replied, in exactly the same way as you exist in your heart when you are in meditation, just as the jiva exists in the bodies of all beings and just as the reflection exists in a mirror, this cosmic person exists in his own cosmic body. 
Let's work through these two sentences backwards. Reflection exists in the mirror. What's happening is consciousness is reflected in its own notions. Notions arise. Consciousness becomes aware of them and identifies with them. And this gives them a reality. But consciousness is simply reflecting in its own notions. So the cosmic person identifies with the cosmic body. So we're reflecting ourself in everything that appears. The jiva is a bundle of notions which takes on the form of an individual, individual body, individual personality. And the first sentence tells us that this is exactly the same way as you exist in your heart when you're in meditation. The heart is the heart essence. This is our essential being. And how do we exist within that? Because when we come out of the meditation, when our attention engages with so-called external things once again, then we're back to our usual self. So these potentialities which make up the individual, the individual jiva, are there. They exist as notions in consciousness. So the notions that constitute Rama are still there when he's in deep meditation. It's just that he's not engaging with these notions as fully as he would be if he were out and about. Though he appears to have all these limbs, etc., there is no division in him, and he exists as a rock exists, whole and undivided, pure, infinite consciousness. There is only one thing happening, there is only one thing ever going on, and that is consciousness. That is this pure, infinite consciousness.